What's up? Oh, I lost my coffee. Stay there. Give me a minute. I went to get a coffee. I forgot to bring it. What did I do with it? Maybe I left it. Ah, I'm going to get my coffee. I'll be right back. He's got a model N, M-O-U-N, 14 cents for the quarter. Estimates are at 90 cents. Revenue is 41 million. That was better than the 40 million estimate. Better Isaac, F-I-C. Yo, $3.25 for the quarter. Estimates are at $2.31. That a dog, D D O G, company losing five cents per quarter. Estimates were for a gain of a penny. The company had revenues of 154 million. That was better than the 144 estimate. D D O G. All right. Barber Realty ABR, company announcing a secondary offering of 7 million shares of stock. JP Morgan JNP and Raymond James, underwriters on the field. You guys waiting on any earnings or what? D Dog's out. Anything else important? We had an initiation of research. Oh, Lyft, that's right. Lyft came out. Oh, RKT, too, huh? Whoa. All right, I got to keep an eye on the time, too. Because I lose track of the time running my mouth about the market and I got to get out of here a little earlier than usual. All right. We're ready to go. We're ready to go. All right. So let's quickly uh, talk about this mess of a market we've been dealing with the uh, last couple of weeks. And, you know, as silly as it sounds, we were talking about this um, in the room yesterday. Being that the market actually sold off on the vaccine, things started to make sense again, you know, because uh, you had the election, you had a huge explosion off the vaccine news. And, you know, that, that kind of got caught me off guard in the sense, uh, I was hoping for a little bit of weakness off the election as we discussed on this webinar. Uh, but, you know, the sell on the news off the vaccine uh, was exactly the way it was supposed to work. And you could see what else they're doing with it. They're using it as a catalyst uh, to 
move some money around and potentially uh, the start of some really aggressive rotation. Now, that doesn't mean the rotation has to happen in the, you know, totally in the midst of two weeks. Uh, this could be just the start of it. In, in all actuality, if you look at some of these names, like look at like um, Amazon, uh, Zoom, Teladoc, like a, a, a shop, a lot of these leaders, they already, you know, they, they topped out and have been at best in consolidation uh, since what? Since the end of the summer, right? So this has already been kind of in the process, especially with the, the leaders, the big names. Uh, but now you can see it's getting a little more aggressive out there. It, it doesn't mean it makes anything easier for us, but what it will allow to happen, it will allow us to at least be patient and wait for certain opportunities. So let's let's talk about just the overall market now, right? I think, in my opinion, okay, if I was to you know make a play on this market outside of intraday trading, okay, if we don't intraday, we don't have to discuss as long as you are you know utilizing stop losses, managing your risk, doing what you need to do. Um, you know you can try to day trade in any environment, you're not going to bury yourself, okay? So what I'm talking about is swing trades, and that's the, 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 the common question I get asked, right? When, when am I going to aggressively start looking at swing trades again? When, and, you know, I still, the incentive is just not there because for me, there's just, there's no clarity. But let's, let's talk about the, the overall market here, and I think this will better explain it, okay? If you remember the setup we had going into the week of the election, okay? So not into the election itself, but the week into the election, okay? We had some weakness here, right? Some really nice weakness set up. Um, some tactical sentiment signals, right? Bullish here, meaning the bearish positioning got a little too aggressive, too one-sided, okay? And you know, you had, I think it was boom, 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 three days. Let me get that out there. You know, three days of a really nice squeeze. And then you went into the election, right? Or was it this, this, boom, boom. And then this was the election. Okay. So that exact setup, if you could think back, because we discussed it when it was happening. And if, you know, we were waiting, hopefully, off the election, we were hoping that it would at least linger down here after the election to allow us to find, you know, some entries on on the long side and play for a squeeze without the election in, in the middle of things, right? That added risk. That's kind of what we were hoping for. But if you can go back and remember and look back at that same exact setup, that's the blueprint, I think, for the ideal setup on the market itself, if you're interested in playing the indices for a swing, okay? Outside of that, I think it's just way too difficult. And now you have this added wild card, right? Another intangible where you got this aggressive rotation. So here's the problem. Like today or yesterday you had you know, industrials up, banks up, um, you know, a nice chunk of the market, economically sensitive names up. But the NASDAQ, the selling was just too much that, you know, it weighs on the indices, okay? And on the flip side, when they overdo it on a short-term short, short -term basis, right? When these rotation names, the names they've been rotating into just have gone up too quick, too much too quick, and they come back to the NASDAQ names, they're going to sell those names they were just buying and going into. And that will likely, you know, play a burden on the indices. Okay. Can the market, can the overall market, can the indices still trade higher? Yeah, it's certainly possible, but you can see how, why would you want to even get in the middle in right in the middle of something like that? You know, these are the things you want to avoid. You know, we don't want to play this game. We won't, you know, 
it's one thing to roll the dice, place bets, have a good time, you know, as long as we know we're having a good time. But the things you want to try to avoid are setups like that, that just aren't that juicy, aren't that sexy, right? That things aren't lined up the way you would like them. So I think you're doing yourself a disservice if you're trying to catch a nice trade and have a favorable risk reward on the indices, unless you have short-term sentiment lined up in your favor, like we did the week, again, forget the election, all right? The week of the election, right? The election was a crapshoot. The market went up big, whatever, you know, it was a risk, could have gone down big, right? Those are the events. Again, we want to try to avoid. That's another thing we want to try to avoid in swing in swing positions. All right. So it's just the setup that we had the week of um, and led to the squeeze into the election. And then obviously there was a lot of juice that carried on after that. Okay. But now, so what I think the rotation we're seeing now, what I think it gives us, I think now it opens up a window for at least now to the end of the year of some shorter term trades, okay? Not day trades, but I'm talking about even short term, the kind of stuff you guys like to trade. I mean, let's be honest. You know, you guys like to um, swing and try to, you know, hold overnight positions, but you don't want to hold on to them that long, right? That's, that's generally what the majority of you uh, ideally would like to play, right? And I think this rotation opens up the window for more setups in that camp, okay? And let me see if I can explain that um, a little better. What, here's an example, right? We've seen the rotation out of NASDAQ and into all these economically sensitive names off the vaccine, right? I think eventually, if this continues, we're going to see even more action in individual names where we're gonna see rotation into a lot of the laggards of these economically sensitive issues, stuff that, you know, we forgot they're even still around. We forgot they even, they trade publicly because they've been MIA, no interest in these names for so long, okay? I think eventually the flow and the money is gonna find these things, you know, as well. Another good sign for individual names is that you got the small caps, right? Another whole big chunk of the market that, really didn't do too much, right? As the NASDAQ growth names really took a leadership role, you know, this did a whole lot of nothing. You know, you could possibly, again, set up something where you get, you know, you're coming out of this maybe into next year, right? You get one of these moves. And in these moves, there's a lot of individual names. One issue is some of these names don't trade options, right? So we're not gonna see flow in them, they're small caps. But there's enough, there's enough, but they're not really liquid, right? They're not the Teslas, the Facebooks, the fangs of the world, okay? So all those other things could still be traded, but the problem is, is when you're looking for that extra follow through, you're so used to getting paid in these names and seeing them you know, follow through each and every time, if they're out of favor and there's some legit rotation out there, you're not going to see them quote unquote break out. Okay. Again, what do I mean? Teladoc. All right. Every, everybody's junked up. Kathy keeps buying on the dip, buying on the dip. You know, there's been opportunities in the name if you bought on poles and sell them into the rips. But if you've been waiting patiently for that breakout, right? that you're used to seeing in a lot of Kathy names, this name in particular, hot growth names that trade like it, you kind of got beaten up, all right? And it's gonna be a slow pain. Again, if this rotation sticks, we've, you know, we've seen glimpses in the past, but the writing on the wall has been for a while that once this vaccine, once the news hits of the vaccine, that's where it's really going to put this huge rotation into play, right? 
That's that's usually how the market works because you had that overhang, you know, waiting for that vaccine for a while. And now that it's finally here and you're starting to get that news, um, you know, you're going to see the rotation get a little more aggressive. And interestingly enough, now we know why a name like Teladoc with COVID numbers going parabolic right now, hospitalizations going parabolic right now, you know, this stock can't get out of its own way, right? Like the market always knows, man. It's, it's unbelievable. You know, the market always knows. You know, that why was the market ignoring these uh, COVID numbers? And why were, more importantly, these names that thrive in a COVID environment, right, act so weak? That's because the vaccine, the vaccine news was coming. All right, so, so here's the thing. Again, individual names, I think, is where the juice is. Um, we want to be patient. We want, we want to wait for the, the decent setup. Okay, so like for me, these past couple days, I can't, you know what I mean? Like General Motors is catching extra flow. I can't chase this here now, right? GE, these things were the first batch to catch flow. I can't chase these names, right? Boeing, you know, fine if you're trading it intraday today, but I can't chase a gap up and day two, three of this. I can't do it, okay? So now I'm personally looking for what do they find next? What other names do they find next, okay? And maybe the next is not even here. Maybe they rotate back into tech um, and some of the stuff they've been selling because they've done some damage and you could get, you know, that snapback bounce trade. All right, so th there are trades, there are gonna be trades out there in individual names, more so than the individual market. Uh, again, tactical trades that I think you guys um, should enjoy, okay? But you know, as far as legging into positions and trying to hit that, you know, that big hit, that home run, uh, buying into weakness, we, we haven't seen enough yet. You know, we want it, we want to see enough. Like you see, like this AON, the type of action the type of action it caught, like we want to see more of that, right? And that will tell us, okay, we got some stuff to swing here. They're bombing, you know, they're bombing underbelly names at nice spots. It's all about the spot. It's all about the spot, right? When they continue to find quality setups early, um, it tells you a lot about the health of the market. And it's a good way to keep out of trouble too. Yeah, it's not even the vaccine going into the arm, Kyle. It's got, you know, the market always factors in the future. Always. Okay. What you and I are looking at and reading and hearing about in front of us right now, the market has already digested it and crapped it out in the toilet bowl months ago. So I get a little graphic so you get the picture. You know what I mean? That That's why the stuff that 95% of players and traders look at in this game is completely useless because the market already has factored it in, right? The smarter money knew about this or had an idea about this ages ago, right? So that, that's why it's not a matter of when the vaccine is going to get out and, and you know, actually contain COVID in, in, a, in a good amount of people, right? We know it's probably at some point, you know, first end the first quarter next year, right? Where enough people get it, at least. But, you know, the market, for the market, that's already, that's already factored in. That's already factored in. We want, like, the answers I'm hoping to get from the flow in the market right now or, you know, what's, what do, how are these guys going to position for, you know, into the first quarter next year? Okay. I mean, is tech going to be out of favor? You know, we, we talk about that. We've been talking about rotation out of tech for a while. Maybe we go into a market where, you know, tech and economically sensitive names and small caps rally for a period of time. 
and tech just lags. Very possible, you know? So we, we just want, we want to get enough information. You know, we want to get enough information so we have, uh, so we can put the pieces of the story together. You know, we have an idea of what, what we're buying. You know, there's always a theme out there. You know, there's always a theme out there. And usually the flow will, if you're paying attention, will start to show you signs of what's taking place earlier than usual. So, you know, that's, that's, that's what I'm waiting on. You know, that's what I'm waiting on. Okay, maybe commodities, maybe commodities end up really heating up. You know, we really don't know what's in store. This, this market and the economy could go so many different ways. You got the Fed taking unprecedented, unprecedented action, right? You know, if, and they're not looking to put a lid on that for a while. I mean, things can really get hot at some point next year. It's very possible, but you know, we'll see. And yeah, it wouldn't shock me at the same time, you know, now the, a lot of these tech names have topped. I'm being honest, you know, e, either or wouldn't shock me. Yeah, these names have been hot for so long. I mean, there's so many bulls. These things are so crowded, you know, so crowded. And we've been saying this for a while, maybe now is the time, you know? So that's, and that's what I'm waiting on. You know, that's what I'm waiting on to swing. I'm, I Listen, I want to swing and I want to build positions. That's one of my favorite things to do in this game. You know, I love to do it. Um, so I want to do it more than probably anybody here, but I, I'm not going to do it just for the sake of doing it. Um, you know, just cause I haven't done it in a while. <laughs> You know, I, it doesn't make sense to me. Like what I'm seeing in this market right now, you know, I really, I'm being honest with you guys. I don't have much of any regrets of not having any swing positions on. And, you know, the market is okay, right? The overall market. But, you know, I could have very easily been in tech names that look so good, you know? And the market is up net net, but whatever name I'm in getting clobbered. So I, I really, I don't have any regrets of, of being in the position I am right now. You know, and the best, if you guys realize, and you guys will see this, if you pay attention to your own action, your own PL, you know, when, when, when you're swing trading, et cetera, what you'll see is that, you know, the, the bulk of your profits, usually, sometimes you get lucky, you hit a nice winner late and it can skew things. But the bulk of your profits usually are coming early on in the rally when a lot of things are lining up, whether you realize it or not. You know, it's it's it feels again, I hate to use the word easy, but you guys know what I'm talking about. It's easy. You know what I mean? Where you almost feel like you didn't do anything special. You could have threw you could have thrown a dart at any sweeper at that time and you would have made money. You know, that's, that's the time where you really want to be eager and excited to position trade. That's when you want to be most aggressive. Okay. Cause again, you have the odds on your side. That's where you, you know, you can make a dent and you can open up a little bit and it's worth opening up when, when it's as sloppy as it is right now, you know, with all these different balls in the air and feels like a variable event every two times a week. You know, they, these names going up, these names going down. You don't know how long that's going to last. The other names can go up next week and these names can get clobbered, right? It's, think about how much luck has to go into that. There's a lot of luck that goes into that. You know, so that's, that's just me anyway. So that's another thing I wanted to touch on uh, on this webinar too. That, and you guys, the majority of you, you guys know this, but that's me. You know what I mean? That's my style. That's what's kept me in check. You know, that's me. There's, you know, I'm sure quite a few of you that want to be, you know, maybe you're younger in age, you got more money to blow, or you want to take more risk or for whatever reason, you want to be more aggressive. Okay. And that is why, you know, for those of you who are members, 
I continuously post, you know, top bets and talk about some of my favorite action that I'm impressed with throughout the day, right? Continuously give you updates on sentiment, no matter where they where they are, maybe that even if they're not even close to any particular bullish signal. Right? Because if I mean I expected everyone to do the same thing that I was doing, I would only talk about flow and sweeper activity that I was interested in playing off of. And I would only talk about sentiment when it was actionable for me. You know? So that's why for members, I, you know, no matter what, I don't change. I'm going to show you each and every day, um, you know, like it was a perfect setup and you do with the, you know, do with the information what you will. Yeah. And, and that's the other thing too, uh, Alexandra, the, the short-term scalping game, whatever label you want to put on it, hasn't been, you know, has been decent. Has been decent. Like there have been there have been days where I've scratched myself to death, you know, where I played a few things and they did absolutely nothing. And um, you know, I lost money on the day from scratch trades with I mean, without a doubt. But there are also days where, you know, I played only one or two names and I got a little lucky and made some money. Okay, I know, you know, I know beforehand, I'm not going to cover, I'm not going to knock the cover off the ball, scalping, right? That's oxymoronic. You're scalping to try to grind it out, you know, or you're day trading to try to grind it out and make a little bit of money while you're allowing things to set up in a more favorable way. That's, that's the reason for it. So, yeah, but I agree with you. I agree with you. Um, there's been plenty of moves and a lot of moves that I definitely missed uh, on an intraday basis uh, to keep us content while we're waiting uh, for something juicier, you know, for something juicier. All right. As far as um, signals are concerned, oh, this, it was a killer, right? It was a killer. The election was a killer. That's why it's a variable event. It can go either way. We had a real, a pretty solid setup starting the week of the election, okay? If we did get a little bit of weakness or even some chop off the election, you know, we could have very easily made a nice dent off a move like this. Like really be prepared and positioned for, again, a quick move and a powerful one at that off this, right? You had a lot of things there. You had tactical sentiment there. You had the squeezeometer in the 30s. You had um, spy gamma uh, negative. You had a lot of things that when the tide turned, right? When we, there were any signs of sweeper activity to light the match, there would be, again, not a start of a bull rally, just a powerful squeeze based off positioning. And that's, in my eyes, that's all this was. That's all this was here. That's all this was. Players were positioned one way going into the election. They had to unwind that stuff. And this is where you get these over-exaggerated moves. Right? Now, you're, you're getting the rotation. So S&P 500 looks different. But for the NASDAQ, it nothing's really changed here. You know what I mean? Right? They rushed in, rushed out. I mean, think about the NASDAQ. Here they, they want it out because of a blue wave. Then they rush in after there's no blue wave. And now they want out again because of a vaccine. Net, net. Yeah, it's just a whole lot of mess. Right? A whole lot of mess. No, sure. But see, that's the thing, like, Dan, and that's where... Um, we forget too, like Sharpies aren't, they don't position for this. Okay. Sharpies don't position for this. Sharpies position for, for the majority of the time, the start of a large move. You understand this that we're seeing here from my experience, Sharpies are usually hedged well into this. They're usually uh, hedging into strength ahead of this. 
This was one of the rare times that they've hung around this late into a big move like this and hedged into this high here, you know? So they, they're not looking to catch this stuff. This is not, you know, they want to be hedged when there's a risk of the possibility of a large drawdown, okay? And they want to be long and unhedged when the probability and the odds are for a sizable move to the upside. That's that's their basic premise. They're not they're not uh, short term traders. You know what I mean? They're not short term traders. They're not traders in general. They're hedgers. <laughs> they're considered, but you know what I'm saying. You know. So let's we'll see. And 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 that's why this is going to be. Yeah, they're not traders. Uh, that's why the other thing I say. You know, you guys probably think I'm nuts because I say it every Friday, but. You know, each and every Friday, it becomes more and more interesting to see, um, you know, how they position around this. You know, how they position around this. Do they stay mostly hedged here, no matter what the market does? Even more so if we get selling. Like when we see a, a, a pullback, it's going to be, we're going to get a lot of information out of so many different things. Flow, Sharpie positioning, sentiment as a whole you just we're gonna get out of weakness you get so much more information but if we get a you know a nice little pullback if we see sharpies not taking off those hedges that could be a dangerous sign you know that could be a dangerous sign but again we'll see all right and that's the last thing we could and we'll run through some names quick uh because then i gotta run uh but the last thing too is so you know, the if when if and when we do get a poll, you know that's that's ultimately going to tell us more than what we know right now. You know that's ultimately going to tell us more than what we know right now. You know whenever it may be, maybe a couple day poll that sets up nicely, uh, and we see you know what are they buying? Are they buying the rotation names? Or are they buying tech? What are they doing into this poll? So you get a lot more information. Um, into the pullback where these up moves, all the buying is, you don't get that quality information. Why? Because you have shorts getting squeezed. They're buying calls. You got hedge funds scrambling for exposure. So they're just chasing without even wanting to get long. You know what I mean? When the market's going up, you don't get the quality uh, of information you do at a flow as if you do into weakness. So that's the story, okay? That's the story. Um, I did, by the way, all that being said, I did buy, um, I rolled the dice with my man, Big Bill Miller. I bought some Tava March calls uh, just because I'm a Big Bill fan and it was catching some flow the last couple of days. Um, and I might add to it, I would like to even go out further in time uh, put in what I'm willing to lose and bet on Big Bill with the addition of flow. Bill Miller, you guys know Bill Miller. Value King. Bought the home builders when nobody wanted them. Yeah, I, I bought March March calls in Teva, the March 10 calls. They were sweeping them today. And, um, you know, I, I would like to go out a little... Um, a little further, I might, maybe I just, you know, roll those and add to it. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah, I don't want to get too crazy, but um, it'll give me something to root on while I'm being patient too. Yeah, he's awesome, Cash. He's just, you know what it is? He's got the coconuts, you know, when nobody wants them. Um, he buys them and usually they pan out well. I remember, you remember Cash when... Uh, we were calling. We were calling the um, the home builder sweeps, the Bill Miller sweeps. But remember when he was buying those things, you know, at the start of all, Jesus Christ, like yeah, nobody wanted to touch these things. Nobody wanted to touch these things. Where is it? These things were awful. Somewhere back here, it must be here, right? Yeah. You know, back here. 
And he literally, you know, maybe not to the tick, but nailed the lows. And look at the move he caught, too, right after that. He's awesome. He's been around a long time, you know. Yeah, yeah. We all made money with him, but we couldn't wait to get out of him. That's the other thing. He's got patience. We don't. So anyway, um, he thinks if Tava gets a little lo- a little lucky with a settlement, um, you're talking about a $25, $30 stock, you know. So this thing's pretty cheap. You know, they got the lawsuits and all that. Yeah, nobody's had interest in these names. I think this thing goes higher just on rotation, too. Uh, but that's, you know, Bill Miller's looking for bigger than that. You know what else was catching flow? Like, these names, all the garbage that we, you know, we hardly see flowing for ages. Mylan. Look at this thing. Remember Mylan? Sheesh. So this thing was catching a little bit of flow today. You know, so these... And I'm not gonna lie to you, these are these are the names that for me here, right? Nothing changes. If we continue to see flow into names that we haven't seen flow in ages in, that's kind of what I'm interested in. I'm not gonna lie to you. That's kind of what I'm interested in. You know, so we'll see. Knock on wood, hopefully it picks up. And like I said, with the small, that's me. Jules, I'm knocking. That was me. For Christ's sake. Um with IWM participating, I think you know there are a lot. You talk about names that have been ignored. There's small cap names that. What was the point of them even being publicly traded? You know. You don't like you. You forgot they even exist. There's so many names that we're going to start to see flow in if this thing really catches some big money. So, you know, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. This rotation could be a good thing um, because I don't know, you know, how much more we could have continued the way we were going. ABBV, solid flow. And a lot of these names look great, Praveen. The problem is they got away from me already. You know what I mean? Like, look at this. So that's what kind of pisses me off on this. You know, kind of got away from me. There's so many names that look like this. Um, but yeah, ABBV, some really nice action, you know, some really nice action. So even if this thing um, does breathe at some point here, uh, it's worth taking a look if you're interested in the name. You know, and this is a solid name too. It's just been out of favor for a while, you know, been out of favor for a while. Yeah, exactly. Short term extended, but if you get some digestion, um, you know, maybe interesting. TSM, they just buy every dip. I mean, this is this is not new either. They've been they've been buying dips in this thing. I can't tell you how long. And it's they've cashed tickets every time. So if it ain't broke, why fix it? They're buying the dip again. You know, not much of a dip, but they're buying it anyhow. And the semis, you know, the semis could sing a different tune, even though they got smashed today, by the way. Like this TSM. Would have been, I don't even know if you guys day traded it, moved moved a little bit, but probably would have went red to green in a jiffy if the semis weren't down 4% or whatever they were. You know? They were heavy today, and TSM, uh, they were buying like, it felt like every five minutes. Yeah, yeah. These semis, you know, again, they're not in the camp with uh, hot tech that's bloated with long players, you know? The semis are a different story, completely. You got you got some studs, exactly like Marvel and all them, and then you have, you know, names like WDC and MU that these things, you know, they've been dead for a while. So, yeah, NVIDIA might be one of the few that is bloated. Yeah, that's, I don't even include that in semis anymore because that, this thing's hotter than a pistol for ages now, you know? So this is a different story in video. But I think it's more the economically sensitive um, cyclical chips. You know what I mean? The cyclical chip players. So we'll see. Uh, Marvel, you got 5G there. They've been buying dips here constantly. 
So even these things, trades, guys, trades. You know, if you think this thing's a little long in the tooth because they've been buying it for a while, you, know, you buy dips and sell the snapback. Oh, I'm kicking myself, Kevin. I love that stock. I love it. I love it. You know, it's a little extended here, obviously. But I told you, I got a good buddy of mine who thinks it's going to be big, big, big winner. It already is. He thinks it's going to be bigger, but um, big winner. I think the, the net, they're just, I think there's dip buying there, legitimate dip buying. You know, I think people think that net is not falling apart here. But it's, it's, for me, it's tough. Like, I want to see others with it, but that's just me, you know? Like, I, I, you guys know me. I mean, I, I don't need to repeat myself, but, you know, net here, I couldn't do it. Where was it? Here? Where were they buying net the last time? I think here, I couldn't do it. So I don't know if you want to pay attention to me much, but I just, this is not my cup of tea here for swing trades. I can't do it. You know, because the move, the move has been there. You know, the move has been there. You want to buy weakness and, and sell it into a snapback rally, I could give you my blessing. But, you know, to buy net at 61 here and expect, you know, 90, I don't know. I, I can't do it, you know. I can't do it. But I'm the worst at that. You know, I miss a lot of winners. Um, what else? What I trade today, I traded a couple of things. What I lost money. What was I had one lose? At the, oh, I traded the overstock. Uh, maybe you want to keep an eye on that for a snapback rally. I thought I could catch maybe a day trade on this thing. It didn't really move too much for me. I took a loss. Um, they bought November's. So that was my loser. I had one. Oh, my winner was WW. WW caught some sweeper activity. That was a decent winner for me. Uh, and there was something. Oh, I played TSM, made a little bit of money. Uh, I think that's it. I think that's it. I N O, that's the drug name, uh, Sean. I N O. What happened? This thing moved today? I didn't even see it. Oh, earnings. Look at it. Yeah. Yeah, Praveen, I trade um, all off sweeper activity. You know, sometimes uh, it doesn't have to catch sweeper activity that day. Um, you know, like LI, because the amount of action it traded, um, there was a couple of days where I just bought it into weakness. They ended up sweeping it anyway. <laughs> That's how much action there was in it. Um, but, you know, everything I do is based on sweeper activity. Everything. Again, it keeps me in check. Otherwise, I'll buy everything. You guys don't realize. I'll buy everything. You know? I'll buy every name on Kathy's list. I'll buy every name that Bova talks about that night that I post. I'll buy everything. You know, I'm a degenerate. You know? Yeah, equities for what I do, Praveen, is I try to keep it simple enough that what if I'm looking for an intraday move or a short-term move. I play the equity. For positions that I want to give a leash to with time, you know, I'll buy calls with some time. You know, I, I'll never play weeklies, you know. I, I don't do stuff like that. I'll buy the equity. Yeah, exactly. Like Teva... Teva you know, I, I'm not interested in a short-term move. I'm more interested risk-reward-wise. Maybe I get lucky. So that's perfect for calls for me. So, and I, I try to, you know, that's how I, I stick to that to keep it simple. Because again, I can get myself into trouble very easily uh, when I start to deviate, you know? No, I'm out of plan. I'm out of everything. I sold everything. I sold everything I had, even the equity I had, uh, which I was kind of pissed off about because, you know, some of them look good. Even this ACM that, you know, now I'm thinking about it, I sold it, and this thing is right in the heart of the play right now. 
This is Rotation City right here, ACM. You know what I mean? So I should have rolled. I should have rolled. Like Ronchero tells me every day, I should have rolled. But that's, I'm telling you, you guys don't believe me. You think I'm joking? I'm a degenerate. I'm, I'm a fill or kill, all or none degenerate. You understand? Like if I sell a piece, I, I can't just do that, sell in increments. I got to sell the whole damn thing. You know, so what are you going to do? I'm wired. I'm, I'm, I'm effed up, you know, I'm effed up. <laughs> uh, what, so what are the names? Quickly, because I got to run here. What are the names? Um, anybody got anything juicy out there? Yeah, Fastly uh, had a little bounce. I wish you would have caught um, some sweeper activity instead of blocks. And then it'd be really interesting down here, dead. Uh, but I'd definitely watch it. Sean, what you what is this? This is a weed play, I found out. You know it? I IPR. I thought it was a REIT. Yeah. So look at this beast. It is a REIT, but tied to weed. Weed real estate. Come on. You gotta be kidding me. What a beast. Uh, so yeah, it looks good. And there's been some nice sweeper activity in this too. You know, they lay wood in this thing. Uh, OT just uh, mentioned an interesting name, LYV. Uh, this is open economy play, you know, had that big gap up off the needle. Maybe it consolidates a little bit over here, hangs out, uh, but they sold puts also some call spreads. So a good sign there, you know, a good sign. A lot of these names, Trip, caught some action again. Look at Trip. You know, see the problem with these things, you had to be in them into the needle news, right? That, that was the thing. You had to be sitting in them with time. And we kind of had an idea it would work that way. Doku was a nice trade. You're right, OT. It was a nice trade today. Had a nice move off that sweep. Yeah, and, and you see, like, these things, again, if you don't get too greedy, you know, these things don't have to fall apart. You know, Doku's a stud. It just may be heavy at times, you know, may be heavy at times. But you see sweeper activity, and it's in a decent spot. You know, shoot. You know, for a short-term day trade or whatever, shoot. SE, you got earnings. So we'll see how that goes. SE, you have earnings. Well, we'll see. If SE bucks this trend, the rotation trend, that would impress me. Um, I'm not really, I'm not concerned about the rotation, Stephen. I think, uh, honestly, I think for the first time since the election, it makes sense. Like it was kind of what we were looking for once we got vaccine news. You know, the, the interesting thing is going to be how sustainable it is. You know, when do they all trade together and what direction will it be, right? Up or down. Um, so that, that's going to be interesting to watch. But I wouldn't say concerned. Uh, this is, you know, kind of expected off the vaccine news. You know, kind of expected off the vaccine news. Think about how many days during the pandemic that the NASDAQ was higher, Stephen, while the the small caps got destroyed, all right? There was so many days like that. So this is just the opposite of it. Yeah, DraftKings um, earnings. You got some interesting, still some interesting earnings out there, uh, especially if there's weakness off the number for a trade. Marvel, Karen, I think, you know, if you want to buy the dips with them, I think you'll, I, I, at least I think you get this lower highs uptrend type thingy, you know? So if you could buy weakness, I would stick to that. And, you know, things are stud. Things are stud going into 5G. Uh, I'm looking forward to a lot of these small guys. I'm not going to lie to you. I, I want underbelly names. You know, I feel like it, it sounds ridiculous, but I feel like I'm, I'm on to something that not a lot of people are on. You know? Like I go onto Twitter, they, they're not even talking about the name. I love that. I hate when I own a name and I go onto Twitter and everybody's talking about it. Oh my God, I hate that. 
I hate it. Yeah, I know, I know. Well, you know, there's not going to be flowing the names that don't trade options, but there, you know, there. I've been a part of small cap runs where flow was involved, and the smallest sweeps sometimes get your eyeballs on a name, and I'm okay buying the equity. You know, I'm okay buying the equity if, you know, I want to lean into something a little more and there's not liquidity. Um, but I just, I like finding those under the radar names. I feel like I have an edge in them, you know, as opposed to Apple and I'm trying to figure out what sweep is uh, actionable. Yeah, yeah, exactly, Tim, exactly. I'd rather have no jabronis on my page, you know? Yeah, it's moving. And then all of a sudden you'll get, you know, you'll get, then the public will pick up on it. You know, you think about it like a net, okay? I'm not talking, they don't have to be e-liquid uh, grocery stores, okay? I'm talking about like a name like net, right? You guys remember where net was catching flow in the teens? Nobody knew who it was. You know what I mean? That's what I'm talking about. We, and you, we could see more of that. LSCC, you know, those, these type of things. They're just cheaper and undiscovered. Yeah, me too, Sean. I agree. Right. Now, Net is a very popular name. Everybody knows it. Everybody wants to own it. You know what I mean? But Net, you know, nobody really was paying attention um, when we were seeing sweeper activity in it. So th that's what I like about the under the radar, the underbelly names. Baby Beyond Meat. What's that? TTCF? I never heard of that in my life. Baby Beyond Me, Tattooed Chef? What the hell is that? Yep, I saw that. I get confused with that and XPEV. You know, the R and the F, but I remember the flow in this. I remember the flow in it. All right, guys, I could talk names with you to the cows come home. You know that. I got to run. I'll make it up to you guys next Sunday. All right? So stay patient. Uh, but we should get answers sooner than later, all right? Same here, guys. Stay safe, huh? I'll talk to you soon.